Hey, you too. All right. So one, please do not forget that we do take requests on this channel. All right. Always feel free to leave a comment. Always feel free to speak your mind. You know what I'm saying? Just, just show some love. It's free. All right. But let's get into the eight badass weapons from history, right? This one has been intriguing me for a while. This video is actually kind of old, but you can't really find weapon videos that, that frequently on YouTube. But let's get it. Especially about like old war shit. Presents eight badass weapons from history. This eight. could get good. Morning Star. This is pretty much the Mace's more ruthless cousin. The Morning wow. Star is made up of a solid wooden or metal shaft. Well, first of all, this has that old school YouTube audio. Holy shit. Imagine this just going through part of your body, bro. The top which sits a large metal ball adorned with a number of spikes or blades. This medieval weapon was used by infantry and horsemen oh. as it was the primary oh, method of attack due to how simplistic it was to yeah. use as well as how effective it is when dealing with enemies. The wow. most common target was, logically, the face or head, although the blow could be directed at the legs or knees in order to disable a foe. The Morningstar Mace has returned throughout history in many different forms since its initial wow. conception from medieval times, and these different wow. designs are often confused with the mace. What makes these designs different? The difference is that a mace has no spikes, instead favoring metal studs. Either way, if you get hit by either one of these two, it's gonna hurt. Oh, seven. Shit. The Hungamunga. The Hungamunga may no. sound like hurt. Seven. The Hungamunga. The Hungamunga may sound like something that's come straight out of the Lion King, but it is, in fact, one of the most deadly melee weapons in history. The Holy Hungamunga crap. is an iron fighting tool named by the African tribe south of Lake Chad. The Hungamunga is a handheld weapon and has a metal pointed blade with a curved back section and separate spike near the handle. The weapon has two functions, as it is most commonly used as a hand to hand weapon. However, it was originally designed to be throwable, as its curved design allows the blade to spin and to clear more distance when thrown. Wow. These African iron weapons are thrown with a rotary motion, much similar to how a boomerang is thrown, and are known okay. to deal a lot of damage to the enemies Holy it's aimed shit. at. The Hungamunga comes in many shapes and sizes, and they're used across Africa from the Upper Nile on the east through Central Africa by Lake Chad to the Africans of the Gaboon in West Africa. Oh, six. Most Say, where the fuck is Chakra. the boom? Often mistaken for another weapon known as the glaive, which is actually a pole weapon that has a very similar blade, the chakram is more like a large throwing star. Also known as a war quoit, the weapon is of an Indian origin okay. and was usually a large bladed metal disc. Chakrams were used both for throwing, like a frisbee, or in melee combat, where slashing was the usual method of attack. A different form of the chakram was the chakar. This bladed throwing weapon takes the form of a hoop rather than the disc, which the chakram is well known for. Chakars were used by Sikh warriors, again as both a throwing and melee weapon. The weapons have a frightening range of up to 100 meters, if well manufactured. Wow. Five. War set. Wow. Now, what do you think the inspiration was behind the conception of this weapon? You would think it took inspiration from the Grim Reaper's favorite weapon, but no, it was instead created when someone decided to turn farming equipment into weaponry. War Siths were altered so that the blade pointed straight from the top of the shaft. War Siths were used as both a slashing and a stabbing hmm. weapon, and their weight and aerodynamic shape made them devastating. The War Sith is so durable and resilient that it's capable of cutting through a metal helmet belonging to an enemy soldier. The weapon is thought to have originated from use as an improvised weapon created by peasants, which was then adapted for military use. If ranged hand-to-hand -hand combat is your forte, then this weapon is for you. Wow. Four. <clears throat> Nunchaku. Probably one now, of this the one most we know, recognizable right? weapons on this list. Right. The Nunchaku originated as a tool for threshing crops. Yes, this is yet another piece of farming equipment that was turned into what? a weapon. Got some violent farmers out there. I mean, hey, the nunchaku is an Okinawan weapon that consists of two lengths of solid wood, farmers. or in some cases, two lengths of metal that are joined together by a single length of chain. The weapon is used by holding onto one of the wooden arms and swinging the other extremely quickly at the victim. Normally, the user of this weapon would aim for two points in particular when in combat. Gotta be the target head. areas would usually Girl. be the face or arms as a hit okay. to the arm with these nunchaku will cause the arm's bones to break on impact. 
As for a shot to the head, it would either give the victim a concussion or worse, could cause blunt trauma that could kill the victim if they don't receive help soon after the attack. Three. Wow. Bardage. This weapon is yet another ranged melee weapon that looks like a hybrid between that of a regular pole weapon and a battle axe. Oh, as I've you can seen see, these. this weapon combines both of the best aspects of each weapon, as it consists of a long pole to give the user the reach advantage when in combat, but also includes a wide axe head attached along the side and tip this of the so shaft, crazy. making it difficult for victims to dodge. The Bardage is of Eastern European and Russian origin. Used as a slashing or cleaving weapon, this weapon was wielded in two hands and swung both horizontally and vertically. Bardiches were often wielded alongside a firearm for use in the event of close quarters encounters, although weapons of this style were in use long before the arrival of firearms. Okay, the power okay. of the weapon That's came from the confused. weight of the blade, which was usually over two feet wide. The method of attack would usually consist of cleaving at the limbs or torso of the foe. Yeah, after hearing that, I don't think anyone would want to attempt fighting someone who's carrying a bardage. Two. They can miss. Maul. Similar to and just or as brutal just as the, the modern day Depends sledgehammer, the Maul is a nasty blunt force weapon that was invented and used by French citizens. Much like most of the weapons featured on this list, Mauls were not originally used as weapons, but rather as that, tools. Though. However, in time, they have been employed by various military factions for combat purposes. Its use is similar to that of the sledgehammer, meaning that there's no real strategy when using it. Wow. Just aim he for a body <laughs> part and watch the carnage ensue. Yeah. Common target areas would be the head, as you'd expect, because that is essentially an instant kill no matter how you look at it, and the arms and legs so you can take away your victim's ability to fight back. A single blow from a maul is sufficient to shatter bones and cave in skulls. Is that why it's called mauling? Hmm. Even when a helmet is worn, the length of the handle allowed for the maul to be wielded in two hands. A common tactic was to break Ooh. the legs of the victim with pretty. a stout blow to the knees or shins, then finish the poor guy off with an overhead smash to the skull. Ooh. Pretty much everything you'd expect when using a freaking sledgehammer as a weapon. One. Blunderbuss. No one said anything about firearms not being eligible for this list. I honestly wasn't expecting firearms to be in this list. I kind of expected like the number one to be like a katana or something. The blunderbuss is one of the very first forms of the shotgun, as it uses a loading system very similar to the musket, and it needs a refill of powder before each shot. The weapon was muzzle-loaded and is identified by the distinctive flared muzzle. This was actually the worst part about operating a blunderbuss, as the flared muzzle caused the shot to spread quite widely and reduce the muzzle velocity meaning the shots outside of very close quarters resulted only in shrapnel wounds rather hmm. than the more fatal wounds that would cause death. A blunderbuss could, in theory, be loaded with any kind of shrapnel or shot. Small stones or scraps of metal good. were used as ammunition I mean. at times. The blunderbuss was used by armies of various nationalities. However, this weapon originated from Europe. A smaller, one-handed version of the blunderbuss, called a flintlock pistol, was also used. As you probably expect Pirates. from a wide burst firearm, wounds sustained from a close range hit would be brutal, potentially blowing yeah. away whole chunks of the body. Yeah. It may be old, but this firearm is just plain badass. I mean, shit. I, a lot of these weapons from this list were badass. Goddamn. Oh, wait a minute. The Grim Reaper's favorite weapon. That's not, okay. Symbolized Harper. Okay. Okay. See, always go through the comment section of your videos, you feel me? If you like it, dive deep into it. Otherwise, now it is time for you to hit the noti bell, get to know me well. Ain't nothing left to say. Everybody have a blessed day. I love y'all. I'm out.